So for our next look at functions, I want to pose another question. We've got our function square that we've continued from the previous video. It computes the result, returns it as an integer. And let's test it out with square 4 just to make sure it's working. And we'll see 60. OK. But what if I want to compute the square of some other number, like 4.3? Let's see what happens. Ooh, so I'm getting a warning here, and it looks like there's some conversion going from a double value, 4.3, to an integer. If we run the program again, we get 16, because remember, integers truncate. And we saw this in a few uh, videos earlier in the series. Now how can we fix this? Well, C++ offers us one tool, and that's the idea of function overloading. So to do that, we'll make a copy of this function. And it's the same name, but we're going to change the function signature. The function signature is what makes up the return type, the function name, and its parameters. So this function knows that it returns a float and takes in a uh, floating point value uh, for square. Now, what do we also have to update? Our result type needs to match the return type. So let's make sure float is a float times a float. And then we're returning a result, which is a float, which matches our return type. All right. So now let's try to um, run this program. Let's see what it does. Uh-oh. So it says the error call to square is ambiguous. OK, but I just said that the function signatures could make uh, the function unique. So what's the problem here? Well, the problem is, if we look at line 17, it doesn't know if it should demote this 4.3 to an integer or treat it as a float. So we can help the compiler out by casting it to a float. We cast by just putting in parentheses the type we want 4.3 to be treated as. And this says, OK, find me the square that takes in a parameter of a float, and the parameter is going to be 4.3. So C++ now knows to select the function at 9 instead of at 3. OK, let's try to run and see if this works. Compile and run, and 18.49. Yep, looks like the square root of 4.3 or the square, excuse me, 4.3 times 4.3. OK, so now let's take a look. Let's make sure our other function works, uh, our old one, our square of just 4. And just treat it as an integer. C++ will assume that, the value of 4. We run, and our program works. Now this idea is the idea of function overloading. That is, we can have functions with the same names, uh, and but different parameters, uh, whether that be the parameter return types, the parameters passed in, or the number of parameters that we have in general. And this can be pretty powerful because there might be some functions that have very common names, like add. That could mean addition of floats, doubles, you know, longs. It could mean to add two strings together which is a completely different operation uh, called concatenation, to put two things together. In math, add could mean add vectors, which vectors have different components. So we can see how the term's overloaded. And thus, C++ allows us to do function overloading. 